Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we make sure to highlight inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, like, subscribe, and share our content. It means everything to us. All right, y'all. So we've all heard it. We've all seen it. And some of us have even tried it. What am I talking about? Everything from TCB oil to CBD oil to gummy bears, mushrooms, and all things in between. Well, I don't know anything about this, but I just met somebody who does. Y'all, please welcome my new friend, Diamond Drip. Hey, Diamond. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today because there are so many questions girls so much I need to ask. But before we get started, Diamond, tell me who you are, where you are, and what we're talking about today. For sure. Thanks, Ricky. I'm so glad to be here today. I'm Diamond Drip, and I'm located in Maryland. My business is twofold. I have a wellness enhancement business where I educate people on alternative medicine and for select clientele, I actually connect them with resources for them to actually be able to heal themselves. And the other side of my business is all about graphic design and brand strategy. So videos, logos, websites, all of it, you name it. And so what my goal is ultimately with my business is to let entrepreneurs know that you can have business success and have a healthy mental space. You don't have to choose between, you know, running a successful business and driving it and pushing, what is it? Pushing the car forward. Right. You can actually care about your mental health and you don't have to be ashamed of it. I love that. And that's what we're actually talking about today. It's the alternative medicines part. Tell me a little bit about the alternative medicines that you deal in and what that actually is all about. For sure. Um, so the two medicines that I talk primarily about are going to be cannabis and mushrooms. I talk about two mushrooms in particular. So I talk about a psychedelic mushroom, so magic mushrooms and the benefits that they can yield. I myself actually participated in a clinical trial uh, August of 2022, and it really just gave me some insights around the science behind everything. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, because cannabis and psilocybin are illegal at a federal level, state levels have decriminalized, but I always like to give an option that's uh, not psychotropic. And so the second mushroom that I talk about is lion's mane. Okay. Now, the only thing I know about mushrooms is from the 70s and all of the psychedelic dancing, what was going on at, you know, at the concerts and all these things. So why has it come back and why are people using it again? What's going on there? I love that question. And I love that you said the 70s specifically, because that's usually what a lot of people think of. They think about, you know, oh yeah, hippies and uh, what is I, it, Woodstock and all of that. And then of course they think about Nixon and they think about the war on drugs mm -hmm. and they think about how people were going crazy with reefer madness and just all of the fear mongering that came with that. And I'm going to be honest, uh, based on the research that I've seen, it pretty much looks like it's making a comeback because it was actually helping people. They showed you the the hippie state of it all, but it was right. actually helping people in mm -hmm. certain circles. People were actually using like um, therapists were using this medicine to treat their patients and they were trying to make it so that it can be as big as a Percocet or a, you know, anything else that they've created. But what ended up happening was that there was no really, there wasn't really a way to monetize it for Oh. the big industry right because you you go on a mushroom trip mm -hmm. and you have all of these wonderful insights and you can receive like you can receive the benefits of your mushroom trip for up to six months sometimes a year 
what? Versus, yeah, <laughs> versus a antidepressant, which they created, and you have to get a prescription for, and you have to meet somebody so that they can make sure that you renew your prescription and all of those things. And there's not really a way to do that with psilocybin. And so capitalism. <laughs> you know, capitalism <laughs> rules. And it's crazy <laughs> what you said, but it's so true they were not able to monetize it. And you see that happening now with the marijuana industry. And now yeah. can you believe we're saying marijuana industry, whereas before marijuana was the devil and everyone that used it, sold it, you know, was everyone was going to hell as a group. Well, yeah. now they have found a way to monetize it. And now it's big business. So that is so sad and so true. So at the beginning, you talked about two different kinds of mushrooms yes. that I want to talk about, because again, if I didn't say it already, I don't know nothing about this other than what I've seen on TV. I'm just saying. So what are the two mushrooms that you were talking about and what are you using them to help people with? Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's funny. Um Let's see. Oh, yes, you can see it. So that's my, as Dre likes to call it, that's my grandma pill pack. And so I make my own capsules to help with my mental stuff. And so the two capsules that I take are lion's mane capsules and psilocybin. So psilocybin. I'll start with, yes. Okay. <laughs> so psilocybin is the active component in magic mushrooms. Um, it's what turns them blue when you pick them out of the ground and it causes that psychedelic bruising. And so mm -hmm. psilocybin goes through a process in our bodies where it's converted to psilocin. And mm -hmm. so that's really when you get into those like hallucinogens and the, mm -hmm. the feeling, was it feeling music and all of that stuff and seeing colors. Um, and so what a hero dose does, which is the experience that I went through with my clinical trial, that's taking upwards of like five grams of mushrooms and just really going into your subconscious. But what I do with my capsules are microdosing. When you microdose with psilocybin, mm -hmm. it imitates pretty much an antidepressant. It activates the dormant serotonin receptors in your brain. And so Essentially, when you get on an antidepressant, you take it, you take it for two weeks, and then right. you might start feeling effects. Mm -hmm. um, four weeks, you should be feeling something. Um, with microdosing, you start to feel the effects within a week, a couple of days, depending on how often you are microdosing. And so what the microdosing does is it actually helps me manage my mood. And so I was diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder. And okay. so a lot of people know about bipolar one, but they don't mm -hmm. know about bipolar two. Bipolar two people have longer, deeper depressive episodes mm -hmm. than their bipolar one counterparts. And so when I went through the trial, they warned me that essentially I would have to stop smoking to qualify for the trial. Um, and they cautioned against me when I, um, when I finished the trial and I went back to smoking because smoking is the only thing that helps me sleep. And okay. so for three months I had to figure something out while I was qualifying for the trial. So in an effort to combat some of the reasons why they were concerned about the cannabis was that cannabis is a depressant, right? They have sativas, which can be uplifting, mm. but in general, cannabis can go into the same category as alcohol, which are depressants. And so they worried that the me putting this depressant into my system would counteract the effects of the trial experience that I had. So I went and I was like, cause I'm not giving up smoking. It's the only <laughs> thing that helps me. So I said, okay, I'm, I'll start microdosing. So that way I'm still getting the benefits, but I'm also able to sleep at night. Right. Wow. Cause that's, that's important. Yeah, um, so the, a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so with microdosing, it helps my mood um, and just a wide range of other benefits. And so what the lion's mane does is it also, oh, it's funny, um, it also counteracts some of the negative impacts of cannabis. And what I mean by that is 
people who smoke are notoriously known for forgetting things or like being sleepy or just all of these negative things. And so with lion's mane, it actually, um, I have to look up the compounds again, but it actually improves your cognitive function. Um, there's someone who's very big in the like mushroom space. He loves all things mushroom, not just psychedelic, similar to me. And his name is Paul Stamets. And he actually talks about how he healed his mother's Alzheimer's at age like 80 or something like that. And she lived to be like 94 or something like that. And he did that with turkey tail mushrooms and lion's mane mushrooms because it reverses almost like some of the the symptoms of like being forgetful and not being able to focus and doing it like so um that's why I I use both of those capsules right because I have the microdosing every other day so that I can have those antidepressant benefits and then I have the lion's mane which I take every day because every day I want to be the sharpest that I can. So that's like my little mini superpower. Diamond, girl, you are teaching <laughs> me so many new words I have never heard in my entire life. Now, it's it's interesting to me, you know, because they're called mushrooms, of course, and, and they're in capsule form. Because when you said mushrooms, I don't know about y'all, but my mind went to the forest. So I don't know, do you go out and find them yourself? Do you buy them at Walmart? Where would you get something like this? For sure. Um, so psilocybin specifically is not legal in all states. It's definitely not legal on a federal level. Uh, both cannabis and psilocybin are still a schedule one drug, which means that they have no medical benefits and that they have a high potential for addiction, which given that almost 80 or 90 percent of the states have approved it for science makes no sense but you know united states systems um and so with that uh psilocybin i can only speak to like where you are like geographically so within the dc maryland virginia area we have what are called I-71 compliant laws and I-81 compliant laws. And so what those laws basically say is that you're not actually selling anything, you are giving it. And so you have products like a t-shirt or someone had told me that there was a pizza shop that did this. Like you have, you buy the pizza and it's like this like $60 pizza because it comes with yeah because it comes with a gift of cannabis that you can pick and so that's kind of how they go about it so like for example you can sell stickers Mm -hmm. and they could get your artwork and then you give them a gift of edibles or things um so it really just depends on where you are um Mm -hmm. I'm based in the DC Maryland Virginia area so Mm -hmm. there are a few vendors um I really personally like to educate people first um, before they become a client of my wellness enhancement business, just because education is so important. Fear mongering is a real thing. Um, And so with psilocybin, that's really kind of the pocket. That's not really like telling you where to find it, but that's just because of federal laws. Lion's mane, on the other hand, is like I said, it's not psychoactive so you can go to one of my favorite things to do when I have time is go to Whole Foods and they have um they have this company and they just they just grow mushrooms so all different types of mushrooms and if I'm lucky sometimes they have the lion's mane box where you can go and you can get the mushrooms and so then I slice them up and I dehydrate them and then I grind them into a powder where I make my own capsules um obviously I just said a lot just then so you can also also get the powder on amazon like depending on where you are (laughs) yeah you can get the girl that you can go buy a 60 dollar pizza and get a gift of you know mushrooms i don't know see because on tv that's illegal but apparently it's a new thing so then what is the difference between like you said you're not giving up smoking and y'all we're not talking about cigarettes just fyi so (laughs) What's the difference between what's going on with the mushrooms and the cannabis? 
So what the cannabis is mostly known to do, cannabis has never been known to cure depression. It's been known to cure anxiety because of all of the alarming triggers and things that go off in your brain. And so what the cannabis does, it it is a depressant. It's a calmer, right? So for anxiety, if you're having an anxiety attack, yeah. you would smoke something like an indica or eat an edible or something. And the the goal is that you would calm down. You would be able to take breaths. But the reason that it doesn't work for mood enhancement is because, and this is one of the things that I had to accept, because before the trial, I would smoke, I would take a dab in the morning, I would smoke at night, edible, whatever, like I can do it. And then after the trial, after my tolerance was reset, because I hadn't smoked anything in three months, I, I quickly, you know, I would try and take a puff here and there in the morning and just my days weren't as productive. Like I had this brain fog, like even with sativas, it was just one of those things where sativas are more uplifting. And so even when I smoke a t- sativa, I am more uplifted than an indica. Right. I still kind of just want to watch Netflix and not do the work that I want, that I have to do. <laughs> right. Again. <laughs> So many new words. So, you know, we've heard of the smoking. We've heard of the edibles. I mean, people have CBD lotions. We have, where I'm at, we have CBD stores and there's everything out there. So is there a difference, if you will, between the CBDs versus the THCs that is the thing that makes you high, if you will? Yes, absolutely. So, and this was... I had to actually experiment with this, uh, Uh with the trial, because I had to give up smoking. I had to test negative for a drug test that tested for THC, but I also needed sleep. And so one of the things that I ended up coming across um, was a CBD flower. Uh, There was this company, it's called um, Perleaf, P-U-R-L-Y-F. And they actually have CBD that you can like go online and order. You can order carts and things. And um, I went and I ordered some flour and I was worried because it actually did relax me. It relaxed my brain enough for me to get to sleep. Um, It didn't unfortunately help keep me asleep, but it did help me relax enough to where I was able to go to sleep. And because it was effective in that way, I was worried. I was like, I don't, I don't know. This says it has less than 0.3 THC, like Delta nine THC, but like it's working. So I don't know. (laughs) Um, And it there. So just the way that it's structured, CBD is non-psychoactive, but you do get the benefits of like less inflammation. Um, You do relax your brain enough to go to sleep. People with anxiety actually prefer CBD medicine sometimes because with THC, because there are still those small psychoactive components, you um, you can still trigger, like, so if someone smokes something for anxiety, like, let's say for example, they smoke a sativa, which is okay. more uplifting, it mm-hmm. can also give them more anxiety because they mm-hmm. now have all of this anxious energy and now they're paranoid. But with CBD, it doesn't have any psychoactive components Mm -hmm. so you're getting the benefits but you're not getting the the negatives in a way um but you're also which is for some people you're also not getting high you're not feeling anything necessarily and so that really is just the distinction depends (laughs) on what you want to do girl you have so much information so where did you figure all this out? Where did you learn this at? Now, I know because some folks watching this are like, huh, I'm doing my own trials right now. But what, where did you learn this? Um, Gosh, I, I, my best friend is also in the same space that I am. And she has taught me so much. I've actually gone and done courses. And uh, like I did a growology course. I tried to grow my own plants. I learned that I don't have the environment for it. (laughs) They died very quickly. (laughs) Um, But I went through uh, a holistic course. I went through an advanced holistic course. And then, of course, being in business and working with clients for the past three years, because I started my first business in 2019, like you just learn on the job. Uh, And I'm one of those. Yeah. (laughs) And, And I'm one of those people where it's like, 
if it's an opportunity to learn, especially if it's something that I'm interested in, okay. I'm going to do it sometimes to my, my fault. <laughs> There's that. So who are your clients? Who, who's looking for you? Yeah. Um, so the people I've had to answer this question, uh, for business purposes, but, um, generally my clients are middle age range. Um, mm -hmm. not really a lot of younger people. Cause I, I myself am an old soul. And so people have to meet with me on an appointment basis. So I have hour cutoff times and, you can get your order to me before the hour cutoff time. So that that allows me to plan my route because I don't I don't bring with me what you don't order. So I need to have time to plan you. OK, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C., Maryland, this and that. And so um, younger people, I'm a young person. So this is going to sound weird, but younger people don't necessarily have that, you know, like appointments and things. They're like, OK, I want it now. And I'm yeah. like. I'm like, but that's not how it works here. That's not how we do things. We make appointments. We we know things beforehand. We set times. So um, most of my clients are older. Uh, they work in customer service jobs. Um, I have people who are project managers. So just really, honestly, just people who are people facing mm -hmm. and they have like, I would say high stress. Wow. High, high stress jobs mm -hmm. sure. um and they are looking for something to help them unwind and relax after a long day of doing work that they may not necessarily have wanted to do that day that's so, so true wow yeah. that's crazy diamond if somebody wanted to learn more about you and what you do where can they find you <laughs> for sure um diamond drip consulting is the website that hosts uh all of my connections so you'll be able to learn about the community you'll be able to learn about uh, some of the services that I offer um and you'll be able to connect with me on social there that sounds cool y'all if you didn't get any of that and believe me there was a lot going on there we are going to have all of her contact information in the description below and don't forget while you're here like subscribe and share our channel. Now at Faith on Friday Presents, we want to give you an opportunity as well. So if you or someone you know has an inspiring story, a topic we absolutely have to talk about, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send me a message. Diamond, my friend, before I let you go, <laughs> we have to play a game, bro. <laughs> So this game is called This or That. It's really simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things. And you, off the top of your head, just let me know which one you like the best. Are you okay. ready to play? I think so. <laughs> do this. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Read the book or see the movie? See the movie. Wallflower or Life of the Party? Wallflower. Really? I guess I should know that. I don't know. I didn't see that. <laughs> I saw that differently somehow in my head. Summertime fun or Winter Wonderland? Winter Wonderland. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Eat to live or live to eat? Ooh live to eat me too I love food so much <laughs> out in nature or I'd rather be in the house I'd rather be in the house <laughs> coke or pepsi coke drive the car or ride ride <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right I like sports or I don't care I don't care <laughs> all right and finally what was your first job in high school in high I sold knives yeah. There's so <laughs> many questions there. <laughs> um, Cutco knife? Cutco, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny in high school. I like it. Yeah. So, this 
has been so much fun. Diamond, thank you so much for joining me, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and don't worry, everybody. We'll do this again next time on Faith on Friday Presents. Thank <laughs> you.